What's going on, everybody? So, as is tradition, what I've been trying to do for the last several months, maybe six months or so now, probably actually longer than that, is I've been going through finalized eBay sales and looking at some of the cards that I think were really surprising at how cheap they sold, specifically cards under $50. So, why do I do this? Why again is it that I spend time doing this? Well, one of the reasons is because, you know, we see all these amazing cards on YouTube channels and um, read articles about and see them for sale. But most of us, they're just not in our price range. And if you're new to the hobby, if you're coming back into the hobby, or if you're just a collector with a regular budget, it's fun to see some of the options. It's like a big menu, in my opinion, of cool cards that are affordable for most of us. And so I think it's fun to go through and go, man, look at what's happening, what things are selling for. The other piece of it is not just seeing what we might want to buy, but it, it also kind of keeps uh, an ear, you know, we kind of feel the pulse of what cards are selling for. And if cards that before weren't affordable are now coming down into that affordability, it tells us what's happening with the market. And if all of a sudden we start doing these videos and we see, oh man, I don't ever see Clementes or Aaron's or Mays or any of those types of players anymore, then it tells you something else about the market. So that fixed price point of about $50 really helps us to see cards that maybe we might be interested in adding to our collection, but also seeing where the market is at and is it getting softer, is it getting more expensive, or what's actually happening. Now, I know it's fun for a lot of us, myself included, to also window shop, right? See some of those really, really cool cards, and that's why I've integrated in 10 what I call moonshot buys over the past month, some of the biggest sales, not the 10 biggest sales, but 10 large big sales that kind of caught my eye that I wanted to share with everybody of cards from last month that maybe we could all set our sights on down the road as uh, high-end cards that would be cool to own or just see them. Now, another thing that I did, oh, I don't know, a couple of months ago, month and a half ago, is I introduced you all to a really well-known popular deal, dealer with some incredible inventory named Ash Jai. And I had an interview with him and it, it was fantastic. I had a great time talking to him. I've talked to him many times since. I, I met him in person at Strongsville. He is a really good guy. He does a lot of sales on Facebook Marketplace. And, you know, he, does a, he has an online website, uh, which I had introduced before, called Legacy Cards, and the, the Z at the end of cards, dot uh, net. And what I did is I showed you some of his inventory in a follow-up video. And I said, these are some of the cards that Ash is bringing to Strongsville. And check them out. And it, to me... It was insanely interesting. And I wasn't sure what the feedback from all of you would be. I was like, what do you guys think? And everybody really seemed to enjoy it. So what I decided I would do is I've reached out and talked to Ash several times since. I, can, I genuinely consider him a friend now. I think he's a really good guy. And I said, hey, maybe every month or two I can check in with you. And you can share some pictures of some of your newest pickups, some of your newest additions to your inventory. And I can just kind of keep uh, my audience, all the people in the midlife nation, midlife community, apprised of what you've got. And if you guys decide to connect and make a deal, then more power to you. So that's something I'm going to start with here in just a second. But before I do... <laughs> I want to I want to talk about something here really quickly. You know, the last time I showed off a bunch of Ash's cards, a couple of people reached out to me and said, "Man, Greg, you're kind of coming across like are you are you are you getting paid from Ash? Is Ash paying you to do this?" And I'm I'm was like, "Well, 
No, of course not. I don't get paid from anybody. I don't get money for things. That's not why I'm in this. I, I know it may seem right. See, part of the problem is there are some channels out there. And what they are doing is currently working on ways to add revenue for their channel. And I get that. And I get and, and I don't I don't even really blame them for doing that. If that if they're putting in all this work and building this channel and then they want to monetarily, you know, reap some of the rewards, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. This is a capitalist society. But that's not what I'm doing here. When I share Ash's cards, it's not because Greg is getting a piece of the piece of the action. I'm doing this because I like Ash. I trust Ash, and there's a community of card collectors who might be interested in some of his latest pickups. So I'm just trying to connect you guys. So no, no, <clears throat> I am not a salesperson for legacy cards. Now, the other thing I would say is, you know, just like when I go on somebody else's channel, I don't charge them. I don't say, hey, yeah, you want to have me as a guest? It's going to cost this amount of money. I don't do that. I promote other channels. I go on other channels because these people are my friends. These are people that I like. And it's fun for me. It's fun for me to talk about cards and discuss cards. When I go to card shows and I'm showing cases of cards and I'm showing the contact information of the dealers for those cards, it's not because I'm getting paid. It's because... I see some really cool cards that are available and there are 5,000 subscribers of this channel and maybe I can connect you guys. Maybe I can help some of you find a card in your collection and help this dealer make a sale. So why not? So while I, I certainly understand why some people might be um, a little apprehensive to know who to trust or what my intentions are. And I do understand that there are some channels out there that are all about revenue and adding money. Fine. Whenever I am promoting something like cards and sharing them with you guys, just know uh, the dealers are not giving me anything. I'm doing this because it's a dealer that I like and respect. And I'd love to connect you with one of those dealers so you could purchase a card to add to your collection. And even if you're not interested in purchasing one, heck, it's okay to just, I don't know, check them out because they're cool cards to look at. So with that said, let's take a look at some unbelievable new additions to legacy cards Again, if you see something that you like, reach out to Ash, LegacyCards.net, and it's a Z at the end of cards. I'll have the, the, uh, the URL, the, the website, on the screen as I'm showing the cards. Let's check them out. All right, so taking a look at some of Ash's new eye candy he's acquired. How about leading off with a T206 Walter Johnson portrait? And an SGC 1.5. Now, I think this is the only one that he has priced at this point. It's a beautiful card. How about, oh my goodness, a 49 leaf Jackie Robinson in a Beckett sixth grade. And that thing is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you got a Jackie Robinson rookie card, one of the most iconic cards. It's got a six. How about the 49 Leaf Warren Spawn? I picked one of those up recently. It was not graded an 8 from PSA, though. Again, when I contacted Ash the other day, these were all recent pickups, like last week or two, which is crazy. Shows you how much he has coming in all the time. How about the 49 Leaf Babe Ruth? This one got a PSA 2 grade. Really great eye appeal as does this PSA 7 Stan Musial Leaf card. All of these Leaf cards are really well-centered and really good-looking cards. And then we've got a 68 Tops Nolan Ryan rookie card in an 8-grade 
PSA 8. And that thing is really, really nice. I zoomed way in at the footage when he sent these pictures over. And my goodness, that was sweet. And then we got a Topps Wayne Gretzky rookie in a Mint 9 from PSA. A Mint 9 Wayne Gretzky Topps rookie card. Seriously big cards here. How about the Magic Bird Dr. J card from 80? And this thing is an SGC 9 and looks so flawless. And then, how about a Pete Rose rookie card? 1963 Topps Pete Rose in a PSA 9. Now, when you start thinking about some of the biggest cards out there, we've already seen several of them. Uh, he also picked up some Willie Mays stuff. How about a full Willie Mays page? This is the 53 Tops Willie Mays. This one is in a PSA 6 grade. Thing is really, really nice looking. And then a 52 Tops Willie Mays in a 7.5. That is a massive card. That is a really, really big card. It's really well centered. That set is so tough to find good centering. And then another 53 tops maze. And this one's in a 6.5 holder. And when you look at the 6 and the 6.5, each of them has a little bit of a strength over the other. Both pretty comparable cards. And then he's got a 1960 tops Carl Yastrzemski in a PSA 7. Look at the centering on that thing. A lot of Print marks usually on that card, but not this one. And then for some reason, I put this card in twice. So, hey, in case you missed it the first time, how about a 49 Leaf Babe Ruth? Again, that eye appeal, though. The centering is fantastic on that card. Sorry that I put it twice. And then another Jackie Robinson. This one is a PSA 4, but it looks really, really, really nice for a 4. I mean, that is an absolute beauty. Man, how about a 34 with the yellow background of Lou Gehrig? And that you would think would be the biggest card on the page, but then you'll see a 52 tops Mickey Mantle in a 3.5 with really nice centering. <laughs> So those are the recent pickups from Ash. So how incredible were, were those new additions to the inventory at Legacy Cards? My goodness. Now, again, I'm, I call it Ash's eye candy because it is absolute eye candy. And again, if, if you just want to check those out because it's interesting, great. If you want to connect with Ash and work out a deal and try to negotiate a deal that works for both of you, even better. I would love to be able to introduce uh, a buyer and a seller together so that somebody can add a cool card to their collection and a dealer can make a sale. I think that that is awesome. And that was fun for me to see those cards. And here's what I'm gonna do every month or so, I'm going to have a little segment that I'm going to slide in there called Ash's Eye Candy, and I'll keep you up to date on some of his newest additions to his unbelievable inventory. Now, with that said, let's take a look at 40 cards that sold during the month of April on eBay from the 1960s that sold for less than $50. Check these out. All right, so let's take a look at some of these best deals of the month that I found from the 1960s. How about a 68 Tops Roberto Clemente All-Star in an SGC 5 for $49.99? I thought that was a great deal. And then we got the 61 Tops Willie Mays MVP card. I really like the MVP series from the 61 set. And this is an SGC4 for $49. Willie Mays. Then we got a Jim Palmer rookie card. One of the most underappreciated players, pitchers in the hobby. Uh, for $48.27, you can get a really nice looking copy of his rookie card 
and an SGC4. How about a 65 tops Roberto Clemente in an SGC3 with really, really good eye appeal for $47.66. And then we head back to that 61 top set and another one of those MVP cars. Now, this is a Roy Campanella and a PSA 7. And I love the color match with his Dodgers hat there. I think that's a beautiful card for $47.08. Then we got a 68 tops game of Willie Mays in a PSA 7. Now, these cards are really hard to find centered. They're always way off center and get pretty low grades. But this is a nice looking one of Willie Mays, one of the key cards in the set for $47. Then we got a 61 tops Sandy Koufax in an SGC 3 for $47. Centering is outstanding. Eye appeals outstanding on that card. That would be a great addition for any collection. Then we got a 68 tops Willie Mays in an SGC 3.5. Again, I think that is great eye appeal for $46.88. And then we go back to Roberto Clemente. Another Clemente card. Mays and Clemente and Koufax. How about $46.50 for the 69 tops Clemente in an SGC 4? What a beautiful card that is. Then we get a Raleigh Fingers rookie card from the 1969 top set in an SGC 6. A Hall of Famer rookie card, SGC 6 for $46. And that is my first mind-blowing pick of this episode. Again, I pick five each and every time. Then we got, look at this, a 68 Tops Milton Bradley. Not just the regular Tops, but the Milton Bradley version of Rod Carew. His second year card. And that is also a mind-blowing pick. Back to back, the SGC5 second year Rod Carew Milton Bradley. For that little, for $45.44. How about a 1960 Tops Don Drysdale? This would be his fourth card in a PSA 6, and it's absolutely gorgeous for $45. Wow. Next up, we've got a 1960 Tops All-Star of Roger Maris, and this got an SGC 4 grade. It is also $45, and that is a beauty. I love... The 58, 59, and 60 All-Star cards, personally. How about the 66 top Sandy Koufax? We've got another Sandy Koufax. This one's in a 4.5. It's a really nice-looking card for $44.11. Again, it's $15 to get the card graded, guys. And this is only $44.11. And that's got to be another mind-blowing pick for me. I, I'm just kind of... I could have had 10 of these this, this particular episode. There were some unbelievable deals of big names. We got another Sandy Koufax. How about a 60 tops in an SGC2? I think it's got great eye appeal. Really well-centered card for $44 on the 1960 Sandy Koufax. And we got a 1968 American Oil Willie Mays in a PSA 4 for $44. A lot of the times those are folded over or perforated in the middle there. And this one got a PSA 4. And it is a really cool card. How about the 1960 Top Stan Musial in a PSA 3? So this would be his second base tops card. It was $43. Again, great eye appeal. Then we got the 1965 Tops Carl Yastrzemski in a SGC 5.5. What a beautiful card. $43. And remember, his rookie card's in the 1960 set, so this is still early in his career. Then we've got a 68 Tops Hank Aaron base card for $43. When I started doing these about six months ago, you would not see any card like this of Hank Aaron for under $50. There's just no chance. We got another Hall of Fame rookie card. This is a Jim Cott in an SGC 5 from the 1960 top set for $42. And then we go back to Hank Aaron. This one 
Same image, different card. It's the 69 tops. Also in a 3.5 from SGC. Sold for $41.54. So we got Hank Aaron cards, base Hank Aaron cards in 3.5s for right around 40 bucks. Then we got the 61 tops, Roger Maris in an SGC 4.5. This is a big card. A lot of people go for this card because it's the year he broke the record. Now, the 1962 has the number from the record year on the back, but this is still a super cool card. How about the 66 tops, Fergie Jenkins rookie card? Another Hall of Fame rookie card in an SGC 5 for $40. Then we got a 62 Tops Willie Mays All-Star. So we have a 62 Tops Willie Mays All-Star card in an SGC 5. It's a really nice looking card for under $40. $39. That had to get one of my choices for one of the mind-blowing picks of the episode. Willie Mays cards from 1962... In fives for $39? My goodness. How about a 68 Tops Ernie Banks? Got the biggest smile on this card. Such a likable guy. PSA 5 for $37.44 on this one. A well-centered copy, too. Then we got the first solo card of Joe Morgan, the 1966 Tops. It's an SGC 5.5 for $36. His first solo card, his... Second card overall. Then we got another Roger Maris. This is the 63 Tops in an SGC 4. A tough set with the colored border on the bottom. This was $36. Really well centered. Beautiful card. How about the 67 Tops Fence Busters with Willie Mays and Willie McCovey in an SGC 5 for 36 bucks. Doesn't that seem like a crazy deal? Seems like a crazy deal to me. We got the 69 Tops Oscar Robertson in an SGC4. Now, he didn't have a card between the 61 Fleer rookie year and this card. So this is his second card. $32 and a four. How about a 68 Tops Jim Palmer autographed? The autograph received a nine grade from PSA. And it was $31.69. And his rookie year was 66. How about a 69 tops Larry Zonka? Another Hall of Fame rookie card. This is a brutal set. The 69 tops set is so tough in football. It got a SGC4 for 31.52. Then the 1960 tops All Star of Willie McCovey. This is the same year as his rookie card in tops, but this is the All Star variety for a PSA 4. For $31. Then we got a 1963 Tops peel off of Hank Aaron in an SGC4. Now, these things are, you know, not something you find all over the place. And when you do, they're not usually in good condition. $29 for it. How about another 69 Tops football card, this time Johnny Unitas in a PSA 4 for $28.77. And just looking at that card, the edges are fantastic. Another Unitas. How about a 61 Tops Johnny Unitas? This would be his fourth or fifth card, right? 57 was his rookie year in an SGC 3.5 for $28.10. And we got a 1969 Tops Pete Rose in an SGC 4.5 for $26.55. Such a cool card there. Then we move on to another football card, this time the 61 Tops, Sonny Jurgensen, in a PSA 7. 61 Tops, Sonny Jurgensen, an absolutely prolific passer for $26. How about a 66 Philadelphia, Mike Ditka, and that is a PSA 6. This is an important set, the 66 Philadelphia. It has the Butkus rookie card and the Gale Sayers rookie card this year. That's a beautiful copy of that Ditka. Then we got the 1961 Tops Ford shutout game in game six of the World Series in a PSA six grade for $25.25. How about 
The 63 Tops NL Home Run Leaders card has five Hall of Famers on it. It's got the SGC4. It's a little OC side to side, but it's only $23.50. And then last but not least, my favorite Gale Sayers card is the 1969 Tops Gale Sayers. This one is an SGC5, a really, really nice looking copy of it for $22.50. And 50 cents, which is absolutely mind blowing to me that a Gale Sayers card from the 1960s would go for $22.50 in a five holder. That is unreal. So, those were the deals. How about some moonshots? What are some of the big cards that sold this month? Well, you are going to see a variety of football, basketball, baseball, a little bit of everything. We'll start it off with the 64 Tops Roger Maris in a PSA 9. Sold for $3,000. Now, there aren't a lot of cards from the 64 set that have 9 grades. And the ones that are aren't centered like that. And they're not Roger Maris most of the time. $3,000 is a big price, but if you want that card in the highest grade, you're going to have to pay up. Then we got the 65 Tops Joe Namath, one of the most iconic football cards of all time, in a PSA 6 holder, and it sold for $5,327. It certainly would be in at least, at least the top five most iconic football cards out there and fifty three hundred dollars is what it took to buy this card in a psa 6 how about a 61 fleer bill russell but it's not just a 61 fleer bill russell it's also autographed the card received a grade of a six the autograph got a 10 and it sold for five thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars that is a beautiful card hand-signed by one of the best of all time, Bill Russell. And next up, we've got a 1968 Opeachy Nolan Ryan rookie card. And it's a PSA 7. So a PSA 7 Opeachy, 68 tops, or sorry, 68 Opeachy Nolan Ryan for $8,888.34. Obviously much rarer than the Tops version. I I mean, that that one kind of surprised me. I kind of thought that might go for more than that. When I saw it went that low, that, that, one, that one surprised me for sure. How about the second year Nolan Ryan, a 69 Tops Nolan Ryan, and a PSA 9. That sold for $10,200. I actually, this is probably my favorite looking Nolan Ryan card personally. And somebody paid up to get it in a nine holder. And $10,200 is <laughs> not cheap. How about the 66 tops Roberto Clemente in a PSA 9? Now, the, the depth of the color in that copy is what really stands out to me. It's a PSA 9, 1966 tops Clemente. Sold for $10,164.74. That one was at auction, had 47 bids on it, and sold just at the end of April. Then we got a 1962 Tops Willie Mays. This is his base copy, and it received a PSA 8 grade. It sold for $11,150.86. That 62 set is tough to find in high grade, so when you have a card like this in an 8, it's going to go for a fair amount. And it's not surprising that it went high. I, I'm a little surprised it went that high, but hey, I guess I'm not in the market for those, so I'm not really aware of how much they go for. But the 62 Tops Mantle also sold, also in a PSA 8, Sold for $12,099, also in an auction. That's a big card as well. 
Again, it's tough to find the 62 set in good condition, so I guess that's one of the reasons it goes so high when they are. Then we got a 67 Tops Rod Carew. This is a high number Rod Carew's rookie card in a PSA 9. And that card is stunning, as is the price, $25,970 right there toward the end of April. That's a big card of one of the best contact hitters ever. And then we've got the last one for the episode. A 1969 Tops Mickey Mantle with his last name in yellow. And it got a PSA 9 grade. I mean, looking at it, it looks pretty much perfect. And it sold for $30,000. That's a big, hefty price tag. So, what'd you think of the moonshots? What'd you think of Ash's Eye Candy? And what are the cards you would have picked as your most mind-blowing from the deals in the month of April? Let me know. 